hello, 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 everyone. I hope y'all can hear me because my fan is on live because it's like 75 degrees outside and I refuse to cut my air conditioner on. So this fan going to be on high, it's going to blow around. Y'all going get to get that, okay? But thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. I know it's bright. I ain't got my, my glasses on or whatever. Y'all can see my regular face, my regular face, my regular face. With some lipstick on or whatever. But, this is Gossip Chat. Okay, I did one yesterday and no shows that I'm going to review comes on today. So, I was like, what's in the blogs? What's in the stories that I can chit, 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 chat about? I went live last night at like 1.30 in the morning. So, I'm trying to get y'all like a little impromptu stuff. Because, you know, so many shows, I'm like, girl, I'm good on that. I am gonna watch it. So, if you have not done so already, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel. And look, I'm a whole J-Bird. J-Bird. dun 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 Okay? And all that good shit. Now, not a lot happened, but some things happened. So, we gonna chit-chat about it. Okay? First up, but I got my little girl put my glasses on. Y'all know I can't see. Y'all know I can't see. Okay, and my glasses are dirty, but I don't like cleaning them. Anyway, um, I'm pulling up different stories and stuff so I can see what I'm gonna talk about. But I know the first things first is Regine Carter. Her boyfriend is the YFA. What is it called? He's YFN Lucci. Can y'all let me know what YFN stands for? If y'all know what it means, I don't feel like googling it. But I mean. His car was shot up with bullets in Miami, okay? All up in Miami. It was a G-Wagon car. He wasn't in the car. Someone else was in the car and was shot, okay? And the whole car was sprayed up with bullets. Now, TMZ had a video of the car, not of the shooting, of the car. And there's bullets all over on the passenger side, on the driver's side, on the back and in the front. Somebody was getting in that ass. I don't know. I mean, it wasn't me. And you know, YFN Lucci, okay, he's a rapper. And Regine, who y'all know is Lil Wayne's daughter and, and Toya's daughter, is her um, it's his, it's his girlfriend. And this picture looked like somebody might want to get shot. I mean, it's, this headband is is loud, okay? It's real peacock-ish. And it's, you know, teen bullshit. Now, luckily, Regine wasn't in the car. Neither was he. But again, some dude was shot. You know, or whatever. Now, they've been on again, off again, on again, off again. Mainly because she is, you know, a, like 19. I think he like 30. He at least 29, okay? He... Look, he grown, okay? He got a couple kids, too. And she just out having fun. Um, It was Friday night in Atlanta. What, what was that? Atlanta was in Miami. Oh, no, yeah. The car was shot up in, in, in Atlanta, girl. Um, And, yeah, it was the man who was found in the car. He was shot up or whatever. But he ain't that, but he okay. Now, it's just like, girl, what's going on? Now, the Miami, the Miami thing was, Regine and then was in Miami. You know, because it was the Mother Day weekend or whatever. So, she was there with her, her mom and them or whatever. But I feel like, look, if my daughter's boyfriend's car got shot up, and it's a car that she used to be, she's been into. Now, there were pictures of him with the car, so we know it's his car. Okay? It's his car. And, you know, they said that he had to go pick the car up from, like, the impound with all the bullet holes. In it. And it was like... It looked like a good 15, 16. Like, it was, like, shot up, like, from one side to the other. Regine, leave that Gucci headband wearing wear do the long. He ain't going to be no good for you at all. It's just, girl, you just too young. Girl, let it go. Don't let that man drag you down, girl. Just don't do it. Don't do it. Okay? So, we're going to leave that there. And, but, hopefully, the man who got shot, hopefully, he'll be okay. Because, you know, getting shot is not fun. I haven't been shot before, but I assume it's not fun. Um, we see Jesse Williams' ex, well, future ex-wife, well, almost ex-wife. I think her name was pronounced Erin because it's A-R-Y-N. So, I'm going to say Erin, Drake Lee. She was giving an interview to people mainly because, you know, they're still going through the divorce. They're trying to, you know, cut to the kids. They have two kids, their daughter, Sadie, and their son, Maceo. The daughter's five, the son's three. And they're still trying to get them to just kind of battling over the two kids. They have they were together for I think a total of fourteen years. 
they were um, married, not the whole 14, they were married for maybe like five, something like that. Um, you know, she gave up her career when they moved to L.A. to, you know, for him to further his acting career. So she was like a whole stay-at-home mom and all that stuff. And then, you know, he filed for divorce and she wanted a whole bunch of money. And he didn't want to give her a whole bunch of money. Jesse, get that woman a whole bunch of money. She had your two kids. She was with you before you was an actor and y'all were together before you were the breadwinner. So, you know, in this case, I mean, as long as she went out cheating on you and not doing nothing, but, you know, that's your ex-wife. Let's give her some money, bro. Let's give her some money. But, you know, she was giving an interview saying how um, things have been so different since they separated and how the friends that she had made in L.A. for the seven years that they lived there when they broke up, that most of the friends chose his side. Um, I think when I heard about the divorce, I didn't choose size as a fan of Grey's Anatomy. I did think the amount of money she was asking for was kind of crazy. I think because she was asking for whatever amount of money, and then once she got it, like, she wanted more. And I'm like, more? You want more? And she wanted more. So, you know, she brought up how, you know, she do feel like, you know, the divorce, she said it was a blessing in disguise because it was a real slap in the face to see who was around us and why. And at that point, it became very clear. And it cleared a pathway for me to make sure my eye itching, y'all. It became clear. It was, it was, and it was a cleared girl. And it cleared a pathway for me to make a shift and get back onto a path that was more in alignment with how I wanted to live my life. You know, Hollywood and I bump heads. It was never my value system. It was never something that I was striving for. I never felt comfortable for me. It, it, you know, it's never felt comfortable for me because of how superficial it was. And then all of that became abundantly clear when everyone left, okay? Because as she said, you know, when they broke up, people chose to side. You know, she brought up how the negative, the negative headlines about her divorce hasn't always been factual. You know what I'm saying? Actual and factual. And my girl was that just to get me on. Baby, baby, baby. I don't think I've ever seen the word factual until I heard the song, you know, Kelsey. Anyway, I got all distracted. But she brought up how much of what they say is wrong. But I'm not interested in a tit for tat because that's just never ending. People believe what they want to believe because it's easy. I agree with that. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I really do agree. Um, you know, they brought up how um, they not arguing about somebody not having to pay 200 grand for a trial. I mean, when it's, it's you know, last week it says, oh yeah, he argued. He shouldn't have to pay her two hundred thousand dollars for the upcoming trial. Two hundred grand for a trial for them children, girl. Y'all can't show them kids, girl. Mm mm mm. It says the judge heard both sides and made a tentative ruling that Williams, Jesse Williams, who looked visibly upset and frustrated in the hearing, would have to pay the attorney's fees to his ex, but did not make a final decision on the amounts. Um, I'm girl, two hundred grand. It says the blast reported that she recently went to court requesting her ex pay her lawyer a hundred thousand dollars. Her powerhouse lawyer Gary Fishbean or Bine filed doc documents seeking an additional hundred thousand dollars for a forensic accountant used to prepare for the upcoming divorce trial, which is set to go down later this year. Damn, you know what I'm saying? It said Jesse has been trying to get the judge to deny this request, saying. He has already paid her $270,000 for her legal bills since the start of the case. Girl, the actor argued Aaron, I think it's Aaron, I'm guessing, is capable of contributing more toward her own fees, pointing out he pays her, oh, girl, girl, I had to wet my whistle to say this to y'all. Let me put my damn glasses back on so I can be sure I'm seeing what the fuck I think I'm seeing. It says, the actor, Jesse Williams, argued his future ex-wife, Erin, is capable of, con of con contributing more toward her own fees. Pointing out he pays her $100,000 a month 
in support alone. He accuses her of using her support to buy artwork and not pay her lawyers. I don't like causing nobody's mom or nobody's wife a bitch. I don't like it all the time. But bitch, he paying you a hundred grand a month and you want him to give you an additional two hundred no and he, he give you a hundred grand a month for spousal support. He already paid two hundred and seventy thousand dollars in legal fees and now you want another two hundred grand for legal fees? Bitch, that's why they say it is cheaper to keep her. That is why people say it's unhealthy marriages because that's a lot. I don't I don't like counting other people's pockets. I just had to spend forty seven dollars a day. Was it forty seven or forty five? It was either forty five dollars or forty seven dollars to fill my gas tank up, which I know I had no gas this morning. So I'm always I ride my car until there's no eat. Um but I just paid forty five or forty seven dollars one because I want to pay that much attention for gas and I was like, damn that's expensive for gas. But bitch, two hundred grand for some lawyer fees after you already paid two seventy for some lawyer fees and he's already giving you what he's already paying you one hundred grand a month for two kids who are five and seven. Them kids don't need shit that's that girl. I mean he make a lot of money. He do. We we not gonna act like he don't make a lot of money. Um, Lord Jesus. It says during the upcoming trial, she is expected to argue for no reduction in the support that um Jesse Williams is paying her per month. Um he has been battling her to try and lower it down from the current one hundred grand a month, saying that's way too high. You know, she also believes Williams owes her close to a million dollars in retroactive supports. Girl, he currently pays a hundred. It's so he gets oh, so it's, it's fifty for child support and fifty for spouse. So she she getting fifty grand for for the kids and the fifty fifty grand. Of, well, that's twenty five thousand a child. But what does a three year old need with twenty five? Girl, oh. Oh, okay, because his his average monthly income is five hundred and twenty one thousand. Okay. Okay. He makes five hundred grand a month. She gets a hundred grand a month. That's not that bad. But still girl Let's move on because that didn't make me mad. I feel poor. Girl And I'm not poor. Grace me to God. I'm not poor, but Jesus that make me feel poor. Lord, let's change the subject, okay? Next up. Now, y'all know I don't always cover stories in the news, but I keep seeing this one, so I'm like, let me speak on it. Y'all ain't gonna see me because the pictures will be. I want y'all to see the people, okay? So, you know, this is the story for, um, her name is Malia Davis, okay? That's Malia Davis. She's four years old. The person next to her is her mama's ex fiance, ex boyfriend, well, the motherfucker who needs his ass beat, okay? His name is, I'm gonna say it's called Duran or Durian. I don't know. It's spelled D E R I O N, um, Vince, okay? He has been arrested in the connection with her disappearance, okay? Now, people were, what happened was the little girl been missing for about two weeks. And, you know, they're saying that her mom, I don't have a picture of her mom, but, you know, we ain't going to talk about her right now. So, the mom allegedly went out of town for a relative's funeral. And she left her daughter, he isn't the father, but left her daughter and the child they have together, a son, a younger, a younger, um, excuse me, a younger um, child with him while she was gone. Now, he went and told the police that he was going to pick her up, the mama, he was going to pick the mama up from the airport or the bus station or whatever. And um, while he was, he pulled over on the side of the road because he heard some kind of noise with his car. He then said that, you know, some people pulled up in like a pickup truck or some kind of truck or whatever. Um, and <laughs> it's just some bullshit. Let's just say that. But, you know, again, he said he pulled up a noise that came from his car from his tire. That was like around Friday, like May 10th this day. It says he claimed a blue crew cab Chevy truck pulled up behind him. And three men got out the truck and that they knocked him out. And, you know, he woke up at one point, and he was in the back of their truck with three men, and he passed out again. He then says when he woke up or whatever, you know, the man had left him and his son on the highway, but not with the little girl. 
So the, the, the daughter, who isn't his daughter, is his girlfriend's daughter. She got, the people took her, but they dropped him off and his son off somewhere, and he walked to the hospital asking for help. Now, the police was like, they don't believe it because the story kept changing. The story was some bullshit. The story was, because you lying. Because he's li he looked like he lying. Oh, dusty bastard. And, you know, the little girl has been missing ever since. Now, they did have, they searched, like, the apartment, um, and they say investigators did find blood evidence that matched Malia's, and I hope I pronounced her name right, um, her DNA. And they also um, had, a, a like, dogs or whatever, like, um, body-sniffing dogs, like, found, like, residue or something in his car of, like, of a decomposed body. Now... He, he's locked up in jail. He was initially in jail, you know, I think the bottom out was like 900, nine, it was like nine, 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 nine whatever. It was like one dollar from, from a million. Put that at the dollar on and put it a million. But the judge reduced his bond down to $45,000. Currently, he's only in jail for tampering with evidence. Okay, he was sent to jail, well, he was arrested on Saturday for tampering with evidence in her disappearance because they feel like he knows something because his story is just inconsistent because he's a lying-ass person, you know. Now, again, the mama whose name was Brittany, you know, again, she was out of town. It was her father's funeral um, in Massachusetts, okay. And so she left her daughter and her younger son, who is his son, with him. Now, there was, like, footage from a neighbor's, you know, uh, cameras that showed him leaving the house with a, um, I'll make this smaller because I'm this talking girl. Uh, it was with a laundry basket, and the laundry basket, he was carrying, like, some cleaning supplies, some bleach. It was a big laundry basket, and he had, like, bleach and stuff in his hands, which makes him feel like he was cleaning up a scene, and then the bag could have been the little girl because they say the footage never shows him leaving with the little girl or with his son like he said he did. Girl, this motherfucker done done something. And it almost makes you wonder, did the mama do something too? Like, did the mama know something? Like, what? Like I, I know the mama couldn't plan her daddy down, and, and I know that happened, but I feel like, girl, girl. And this is the reason you have to be careful who you leave your kids with. So, they have not found her body, you know, there were traces of blood in the home, and they say it looked like there was some cleaning was done to it. There was also traces of a decomposed body in his car, so that's why they that's why he was arrested because they felt like you were tearing for evidence if you clean stuff up or if you moved her body somewhere else. He hasn't, you know, confessed yet, but he needs to. Like, some white need to say where his little girl is at. Now, her, the little girl, Malia's biological father, his name is Craig, Craig David. You know, he has shared some photos online. He said at one point, um, CPS, like last year, they say CPS last year had taken the little girl from the mom. She was put in child protective services, mainly because supposedly the little girl, the mama came home and, you know, they said that the little girl fell out of a chair and she ended up having like a seizure and she had a head injury. And so the little girl was taken to the hospital, but they were saying how the, 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 the bruises or the way she was hurt were not consistent with her just falling out of chair. So the dad did show like, you know, him with her in the hospital, her face was all swollen. So it's, it already sounds like some fucked up shit was going on in the household. And that is why now the kids the mama had left has been taken and given to family members, you know, um, on the dad's side. But I feel like, hell, his side shouldn't get nobody because he the fuck up ass person. It's just team too much. People, look, we need to be careful who we leave our children with. You need to be careful careful on who we trust. And you can't be leaving your... Look, my mom, when my mom left my biological father, she didn't leave us with people at all. Um, because we, you, you're just not supposed to. Even now with DJ, we don't leave him with us anybody. Point to the blanks of the period. Like, you have to be careful who you leave your children with. You need to be, and even though you never know, because even someone you trust can do some messed up things, but I mean, he look, no, he don't look trustworthy. Not with my kids. No, not today, not tomorrow, not ever. Okay, so let's pray 
that they find this little girl and bring her home. I feel like that man lying through his teeth. And you know, the, the mama was saying how she, because there was a court date that got pushed back. Well, the mama was saying how she don't, she feel like her daughter gone. And, you know, she just feel like she's she not alive anymore. I feel like, how can you say that? How can you give up hope? Like, you should always assume your baby alive. Okay? You assume that shit until, until you get news otherwise. That's why I say I feel like she knows something. She knows something. That's the, the part about it. Um, so I was, you know, I just had to touch. And I know it's other stories that's been going around, but I don't like to touch on too many of them because we get so sad. You know, it's just, it be teen too much. Um, on the lighter note, you know what I'm saying? Wendy Williams was on her show today. Wendy Williams, I, I don't have a picture. She announced that the Hunter Foundation, that she had her husband, you know, it was an organization for people who were struggling with drug addictions. You know what I'm saying? They didn't, <laughs> they didn't dissolve that. Okay, she read the whole thing, you know, you know, even though it was near and dear to her heart, that foundation has been dissolved, but she's going to continue to do things and work with other people. Wendy, like, look, I'm separating myself from that man come hook a crook, okay? I am Wendy Williams. I'm dropping dropping all the hunters that I can. Um, and I think she should, okay? She absolutely should. She also brought up how she did not see why or how so many people were talking about her and her divorce yesterday. I said, well, hell, because you don't ever talk about it. And yesterday, for the first time, you did a whole bunch. You had been talking around it. But you didn't speak on it, you know, verbatim. So, it was like big news. Like, oh my gosh, she actually talked about it, you know, in first person. Let's say that. Even on today's show, she was saying how the girl from Real Housewives of Bethany Frankel, from Real Housewives of New York, who was also going through a divorce. She's like, I should have her on my show. We could just ask each other how we do it because they're both going through a divorce. And so, she's. I think she's becoming a little bit more comfortable just speaking on it here and there. Um, because of not, it's my computer version, because of not, you know, I think it makes her feel like she's, you know, not holding on to her truth. You know, she just said, while accepting her new reality, many things in her life have changed and she remains committed to helping others in the struggles of life. Girl, go ahead with your bad self. Go ahead with your bad self. Um, also, well, I guess I'll touch on this. Um, Black China has her own reality show. You know, she was on Wendy today. I don't, I mean, I get the reason she was probably on the show was to um, announce her reality show. I feel like she wasn't a good guest. And here's why. I feel like she don't know how to hold a conversation. They say when you are an interviewer or you're a talk show host, you know, you have good interviews, bad interviews, or people who do, who are just bad at interviews. I don't think China is used to being interviewed because she was more just like, um, yeah, no, yes, ma'am. Like you could tell, she just wasn't used to being interviewed. I think she she like didn't know what she could say. She didn't know what she could not say. When Wendy asked her about the whole thing, her you know the the makeup artist who accused her of like attacking her with a knife. She was like, um, she's like, oh, was she here? She was like, um, no. Like, is she fired? She's like, um, like, I guess. And she didn't know to say, I can't talk about that as an ongoing investigation. Like, she didn't know stuff like that. So, I feel like I didn't really, I didn't get to know anything more about her with her being on there than before. You know, she, she didn't really talk about stuff. I was just, it was weird. Like, even the whole thing when she was talking about her and, Kylie and the Jenners and all and the, the Kardashians and all that stuff. I feel like she didn't really say anything clearly to like nothing. It just seemed like this jibble jabble, <laughs> jibble jabble. Well, yeah, jibble jabble. Like, okay, yeah, you know, me and Tiger was together. You know, I met him. You know, because Drake had me in, the, you know, put me to me in a song. Tiger came to me in the club or whatever. We started messing around. Boom, I got pregnant. You know what I'm saying? We was engaged and he married, living together. You know what I'm saying? But then he, you know, I was friends with the Kardashians or whatever, you know. And then he started talking to her. And I'm like, we knew all of that. Like, I feel like she didn't say stuff that we didn't know. But I was like, okay, girl, you know, do you? I mean, she's a pretty girl or whatever. You know, it's a good thing she's going to have her own show. I believe she's the EP of her own show. It's going to be called, um, 
what's it be called? Um, I got it. Uh, oh, the real Black China. Okay, and she says she's going to be able to set the record straight about her life on her terms. Um, it's going to be on something called Zeus Network. I'm not sure what that is. I feel like it's some kind of YouTube type thing. They say it's like a pay. Well, not YouTube. It was like Hulu or like the old thing. So some called Zeus. Um, and say it would be an untested look into my world. I feel like hell if the housewives of Charlotte, if the the real, what's called the real sad chicks of Charlotte can be a whole thing on YouTube. China can tell her own story too on a, on a like on a platform like that. I you know, I mean I don't think I'm gonna watch one because I don't know what Zeus is or how to get it, and I'm not the kind of person who would. I'm not a fan like that of hers, so I wouldn't pay to have some streaming service to watch one show for Black China. I just would. Now, if she was on some other show, like if she was on Netflix, I would do that. And, you know, this is something I already have. Like, but I don't, I don't want to pay for another service to see what she got going on. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to catch it some way, one way or the other. And if not, I'll try to you know, view it for y'all some kind of way. We don't know. But, you know, her, she said both kids are great. Um, and she just wants to be honest about what she got going on. And I don't, you know, I guess it's cool. Congrats to her. Shaquille O'Neal. Okay, Shaquille O'Neal is getting his own docu-series. Excuse me. It will be on TNT. I have TNT on my Comcast. If I have TNT. Um, I can't say I'll be tuning in. I'm not sure about that. I'm not, you know, I do think Shaq is funny. I do think I see him post little stuff on social media. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool or whatnot or whatever. Um, but we shall see. You know, they say it's going to be, um, again, it's document his life. So it says summer break, use the involve, you know, rest and relaxation. Let's try a check. You know, follow him along. He, he does a series of DJing gigs in Vegas. You know, he's going to do some international DJing stuff. Um, from a commercial, shooting some film, doing speaking engagements, hosting NBA awards. Running his big chicken restaurant, you know, spending time with his five kids and much, much more. Um, I feel like his ex-wife has had her own show for years, so it's only right that we get to see his life, too. I'm, You know what? I'm surprised. Because I know they get along. I feel like, I wonder why Shaq don't make, like, appearances on the show. Because they have old children together. And I'm like, they should have show some of that stuff, too. But, you know, I ain't going to say nothing about that. So, um, don't say when the show going to premiere, but we shall see. The Dream, okay, who was a singer? You know, he got he got them little songs. Uh, what's one song he got? I don't know. I can't think about it right now. Anyway, he has just welcomed his ninth child. Okay, he has um, four with his current wife. So this, they had baby number four, um, and it was she was born two months early. The woman, the, his wife, had to have emergency uh, an emergency C section. She brought up how, you know, I've had two sections before, but I knew this one was different mainly because, you know, they didn't let my husband be in the room with me. They kind of rushed me off, and I still had on my own sports bra and my jewelry, which means they didn't even really have time to prep her the right way because things were so dire. Um, but the baby the baby girl was born. I cannot pronounce her name, and I won't mess it up. Um... What is it? Oh, it's spelled E L Y S E E. Is it Elisa? Eli Girl, y'all know I'm horrible with names, but E L Y E E S. And it's a little hyphen bank over the first E and the second E. And I'm like, it could be pronounced any kind of way, girl. I don't know. But y'all know, so yeah, he and the wife um, has um, four kids together. He did been married since 2014. He has three kids with um, Nivea. Who also has kids with Lil Wayne. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then he also has the baby girl with Christina, with, with Christina Milian. Now, I don't know where the ninth kid comes in from. Because they didn't mention who that other kid was with. But, I mean, nine children? Nine? That's a lot, girl. That's a football team. Plus a start, uh, uh, an additional starting lineup. Okay. He need to get that shit. Girl, get it cut off. Just, mm, get it snip, 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 snip. He ain't got that many songs to be doing all that. Um... Well, so, oh, Lamar and Chloe. You know, Chloe, not Chloe. <laughs> that picture, that old face Chloe. Um, Lamar has a book coming out. You know, it's like his little, uh, like a memoir is what it's called. And um, it's called, you know, the memoir is called Darkness to Light. Now, we know that he, you know, had the seizure and was over, over OD'd and 
you know, was in the brothel, you know, he was in a coma. He, he, he's a walking miracle. He's a walking miracle. I think they say he had like 12 strokes and fire. All these things happened to him while he was in his coma. And just, I mean, the fact that he's able to be walking and talking and alive. And he will be playing basketball too, like I think in the big three, if I'm not mistaken. The book will be, will be released on May 28th. But in the book, it kind of speaks about him and Chloe and how, you know, he just was not. He said, at the start of our marriage, I was faithful to her. Okay. But I could not handle the lethal cocktail of the spotlights, addiction, a diminishing career, and infidelity. You know, he brings up how old did I mention the paranoia, anxiety, depression. Uh, he said, I couldn't keep my dick in my pants or the coke out my nose. He then said drug addicts are incredibly skilled at hiding their habits. He says I would get very, very defensive and up to Chloe and she would just drop it. I guess she would ask him like, are you getting high? Yes, he's getting high. Don't you see it? But because he would just deny, deny, deny and Chloe would just drop things. And she seems like the type, that's, Chloe, that's her, see, that's her, her, um, uh, trait that she needs to get rid of. Because Tristan and his cheating, and she kind of didn't deal with it or whatever, moved it on. And Lamar and his cocaine hit cheating too. Girl, look, we as women should not be so afraid to lose a man that we know they not doing right. We just don't ask no questions. Because you feel like if I don't ask no questions, I can't get no, I can't get lied to. Girl, the fuck about it. I'm asking all the questions at once. I want all the answers, okay? I want all the answers. You know, he also brings up how he regrets cheating on Chloe. Um, he says, I wish I could have been more of a man. It still bothers me to this day, but regret is something we ought to live with. And I'm like, man, look, she is not the last fish in the sea at all. You know, he brings up how he misses the family and that he hopes to one day rekindle his friendship with her and the family. And I hope we can all be reacquainted one day. Look, the Kardashians don't let no man back in the... Like, when the, when the man is done, he's done. The only man... Who stayed around is Scott. I don't know how Scott does it. I really, 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 really don't. Scott is the only dude who consistently has been around forever. And I don't see him going anywhere. Everybody else, they gone. Caitlyn, they don't even speak about Caitlyn at all. Like, I'm like, so does Caitlyn, like, does she just not exist anymore? I don't know. Because Caitlyn is still the father to, to the kids. So I'm girl on that show. No, it's, anyway. But any ex they have, like, up, done, up, done, up, done, I don't think, I don't think they going <laughs> to rekindle that. You know, only Scott and Kanye holding in over there. Let's see what happens next, girl. But, you know, leave them, just leave the Kardashians. Just let them be somewhere. Like, we don't need that in your life. Just stop it. Um, K. Michelle and this damn custom pastor. I'm confused. Look, I don't follow the cousin pastor. I don't know that man. That man don't know me. I leave him be. I don't follow him. I don't do none of that stuff. But I keep seeing the footage that I think that he posted of K. Michelle cussing him out and cussing the fuss in the restaurant because they both were there. And, <laughs> you know, I guess she did not want them there. You know, so of course, y'all know, I'm going to put the, pope, the picture up that, um, that, um, the Jasmine brand has up. It's just funny. It's just a funny picture of them too. Oh, I didn't want that one. I want this one. Because this, if y'all don't know who the custom pastor is. Okay. Um, bright lights. See, told y'all. I was trying to warn y'all. Um, so, so, yeah. So, this is the custom pastor and everything. I'm going to leave that up because you can just imagine them two arguing back and forth with each other. Okay. So, they were at a restaurant. They both happened to have this explosive, as it says, screaming back at the restaurant. You know, and his real name was Thaddeus Matthews. They call him the cussing pastor. Why? Because he cussed all the time when he be, you know, doing his sermons or whatever. It's kind of crazy. So, he posted the clip of her ranting and raving. And, you know, they were at a place called Regina's Cajun Kitchen down in Memphis. And, you know, he brought up how they had never met before, but supposedly, allegedly, um, she was upset because he told somebody that she painted some walls inside a house 
that she was like evicted from. I'm like, well, how the fuck would he know? Like, I was confused. Like, how does he know about, you know, what she, I, that part confused me. You know what I'm saying? Now, <laughs> when he was arguing and he, po- <laughs> first of all, he petty because he posted a long little cuss out type thing. He's this, so this is what he said. I can't post it because it's so long it won't fit in my whole thing. But he said, today I ran into the craziest bitch in the entire universe, K. Michelle. I have never met her funeral home makeup looking ass. I, I, <laughs> funeral home makeup looking ass. Um, as I entered, I spoke to the owner and shook hands with some fans who were present. You know, down there in Memphis. I guess her real ugly ass is still upset over the fact in December I reported that her trifling ass had painted the, wall, the walls pink of a house she was legally evicted from after missing months of paying rent on a mansion here in Memphis. As I sat and waited on my three pounds of crab legs, the owner comes over and tells me that Michelle told her if I didn't leave, she was calling the police and telling them I was stalking her. So I told her to tell, he said, I told her, the manager person, or the owner person, to tell her, okay, Michelle, bitch call him, which she did three times. He said the police never arrived. So after about 30 minutes, <laughs> her and her very feminine, act, feminine acting boyfriend decided to leave. At this point, I laughed loudly and said, Bitch don't look like... <laughs> he said, Bitch don't look like even the police like your zombie looking ass. She started calling me all types of names and cussing at me, not being the novice to, to cussing. I told her as I looked, I, as I looked at my watch, <laughs> malnourished bitch, take you, <laughs> Lord Jesus, take you and your out of drag looking boyfriend on out of here and hurry across town before the graveyard close. Oh, he says, "K. Michelle, you got the right one. I don't give a damn about you at all. If you hadn't acted up, I would have. I would not have known." Who your poster child of funeral home looking ass was. <laughs> All we heard came Michelle yelling in the background was how, you know, she know he has a boyfriend and she know who the boyfriend is and he know who the boyfriend is. I say, well, if he had a boyfriend, I think I think he would know. But these girl, that's who Mona need on, on the housewives. Uh, not on the housewives. That's Mona need on on real on on the on the uh, love and hip hop. Get them get them two on it, okay? Cause that was just crazy. Um, what else I gonna put? Oh, Beyonce. They were saying how Beyonce made like you know three hundred million when she had stock in Uber because she got stock early. You know, uh, um, Uber just went um public. You know, they had IBO. Um, it says that it was worth about eight point one billion. It says the shares initially went for forty five bucks each, but again, a few stars got in before, you know what I'm saying, that was it. They say Aston Kusher got in back in 2011 when the Paltrow, of course, Beyonce, Jay-Z, Olivia Mum, and also Leonardo DiCaprio, okay? Um, so apparently she was offered $6 million to perform at a corporate Uber event in Vegas back in 2015. However, she said, nope, pay me an equity, okay? Like the song said, pay me an equity. Watch me first out of debt, okay? So, you know, now that six million has turned into a whole bunch more or whatever. So, and this is all part of you who finance, but they say how, um, the, it says Uber current, um, market cap is 67 billion. So, even though it was apparently worth 300 million after that little, you know, the cap of how much can be worth, and this is also, there's a, a um, dilution of shares she would really get about nine million. So I'm like, well, three hundred million down to nine million. That's still a lot less, okay? But still, if you were offered six million and you made nine million instead, that's still three million. Three million, you know what I'm saying? That's still three more million. So even if she made three hundred and nine, it's more million. Can I have Beyonce? Can I have a nine million dollars? Because I knew it's nothing to you. But get you know what I mean? No, give me nine hundred thousand dollars, okay? Just give me nine hundred thousand. 
you know, I'll be good. But I mean, it's smart, you know, since a lot of people don't, you know, do stock market stuff, I don't, because I don't understand it, and I don't have enough money to be risking it. <laughs> I like all my coins, okay, all my, all my money, I want to keep it. Um, also, they brought up how Damon Dash and Lee Daniels, okay, now they not beefing, however, Damon Dash, Baby Mamas, are trying to go after um, Lee Daniels about how much money that Damon owes them. So y'all know that Damon and Lee came to an agreement court-wise where, you know, Lee Daniels would give Dame back the $2 million that he owed them. So I'm like, girl. But Rachel Roy, who was one of the big mamas, and Cindy Morales are going after Daniels. Because they say the money he agreed to pay Dame Dash um, is really their money because of how much he owes them. So he owes Rachel Roy approximately $826,166.88 for back child support and other expenses. And then she has two of their daughters. And then Morales, who has his one son, supposedly, allegedly, he owes her $244,721.43. And so they both say how he had not paid them not nine dollar penny a dime, okay, in 2019 or whatever, even though he reached that settlement with Dame Dash back in 2018. So the two women are going after Lee Daniels and say, hey, don't you pay him, motherfucker, pay us first. Pay us our money first and give him the dollars that's left over. I'm like, girl, they said there's a warrant out for Dame Dash's arrest. You know, over unpaid child support. That's a million bucks in unpaid child support. <sighs> Dang, that's why that's why you don't love hip hop so tough. Because you got child support issues. You need to stop trying to have babies with that girl named Rocky who be talking about she be seeing a little ghost here and there or whatever. Just pay them pay the child support, just pay it off. But I also feel like he don't make as much money either as he used to. So again, sometimes these child support amounts be so high because the men don't be making that kind of money no more and they can't afford to pay that shit. Honey, at the all. At the all. And last but not least, um, Remy Ma and Papoose. Not Papoose. Remy Ma and Safari. <laughs> um, you know, they both are on Love and Hip Hop, but, you know, basically one of the best stories, the other one does not. Um, I ain't gonna say which one. So, they both were supposed to do a concert. And they are now being sued for breach of contract, and the people want their money back. So, this happened, there was a show that was supposed to happen on April 21st of 2018. And, you know, with the Circle Foundation and stuff. Okay, again, April 21st, 2018, not 19, 2018. So, over a year ago, this was supposed to happen. And the concert was supposed to be at Windhurst Arena in Chicago. And they say they had to cancel the show because Remy and Safari broke the contracts. Now, supposedly in the contract, there was a stipulation saying they cannot perform for 30 days at any event that's within 60 miles of that space. Mainly because if you if Remy Ma is going to be, you know what I'm saying, in Detroit on May 1st, you don't want to have Remy Ma and Warren on May 2nd. Because if you don't go to one show... You can just go to the other one. So that one show is losing money because it's another concert close by. I think that makes perfect sense. However, they say that, so Remy was paid $35,000, this is a deposit, a $35,000 deposit. I say, look, no tea, no shade. Remy make work, is, is she worth, that's the deposit. That's the deposit. So the deposit is thirty-five grand. I'm looking like, is she bookable for like seventy grand? Cause think about this: what current hits does Remy have? No tea, no shade. No tea, no shade. I love her old hits too. However, that's a lot of money. I mean, and I, we've been waiting for 18 summers and six winters and 35 springs for an album, you know, from her. So, girl, I don't know. Now, Safari only got seventy-two fifty, So, 
two hundred and fifty dollars um for the thing. But again, again, because they say when we perform on April eighth at the Black Women's Expo, Expo in Chicago, and the Fire Play Rockin' Horse Saloon and Grill on April fourteenth in Chicago. So since both of those places are in Chicago, you wasn't supposed to do that. You wasn't supposed to do that, and it was before um the show that was supposed to be booked. So now the people want their money back. Okay, they want the money back, return the deposit because you broke the contract. You performed within sixty miles of our location. Remy's people saying how they don't know about no legal action going on, so they gonna leave it be. And so far, people, I don't even know if you got people. He doesn't say nothing. Anyway, that's it, y'all. I tried to put all the gossip I could from all the blogs I could for y'all to get y'all some content, okay? To get y'all some content. So do not forget to like, comment, subscribe, to share, to check the description box to get to my Teespring, to follow me on IG. Oh, God, I'm going to move the mic away. And all that good stuff. So hopefully y'all can hear me towards the end of it. Um, But I'm done, okay? It is only 12.42. I'm going to watch me some Chicago shows. I'll be back tomorrow. For some stuff or whatnot. So, I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. Peace.